hands to sink. That's so funny. Yeah, so if the audio gets out of sync, I have a visual cue because it'll show up. There'll be a spike in the audio that I can line up with the visual of my hand. That's what the clacker is. That's what that's for. That's I found so that out. Cool. And I was like, oh my God, I learned something new. Yeah. My name is Haley Bassett. Uh, I was born in 1991 to cattle rancher parents. Um, <laughs> that's exciting. Yeah. Did that add to your kind of like artistic kind of creativity? Yeah, well, I mean, it's had a huge impact on my life, like, um, especially my art practice, because um, I lived like on a few different farms in this area, but all very out of the way. Yeah. So very isolated and um, didn't have a lot of access to like arts and culture, really. I always loved to draw. And my dad was like a very naturally gifted draftsman, like he just oh, awesome. was very naturally talented. So I'd ask him to draw me things all the time. They definitely understood it. Um, varying levels of support. <laughs> um, yeah, I've always known I wanted to be an artist, like since I was like five. And I told my mom that, and she was like, oh, you shouldn't be an artist. They don't make any money. <laughs> but um, I was dead serious. <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, yeah, I kept practicing drawing and what I ended up like really attaching myself to was like horses. I drew horses yeah. like obsessively. I even went so far, like I studied their anatomy and like different breeds, like the oh, history of breeds. Awesome. Like I nerded right out. Yeah. Do you want to talk about, uh, I guess, like kind of your, your cultural background and if that, obviously that influences a lot of your artwork? Yeah, it does very much. Yeah. So um, I have Eastern European descent on my mom's side and Métis and also settler descent on my dad's side. That has really come into my practice in a big way because, I mean, I think like anybody, I was really... Um, you know, it, I didn't really understand how I came to be here, you right. know, especially like knowing from such a young age that I wanted to be an artist and being born and raised in a place where that really didn't seem to be advantageous for that. So I kind of like used to sort of um, lament where I was from as if whether it's warranted or not. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, you know, I definitely felt that way for a long time, but you know, now I, I definitely, you know, cherish the fact that this is my home and it's such a large part of my life. I was looking into my family's history and how they sort of converged on this area and how much that really explained like my being, basically. The, the European side of your family, like how long ago did they uh, emigrate to Canada? Uh, they came from Russia um, during the revolution. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Crazy. That's like super cool and like fascinating. Yeah, it's a pretty dark chapter for them. It was a pretty difficult time. Kind of like fleeing all the, the craziness going on. Kind of having that Russian descent. Does that, how does that change your thoughts about your own, I guess, like artwork and your own process? Like, are you worried about how people like, feel about it right now because of the kind of like the the attitude i wonder if it could change i mean um people's yeah attitudes can definitely change um so what might have been kind of benign um you know sort of artistic style before might have like more of a negative connotation now but at the same time there's so much crossover between like ukrainian russian folk art How would you describe yourself as an artist? Like you're obviously very um, multidisciplinary. You don't really stick to a single medium, which yeah. <laughs> I, is honestly, like, to me, that's a good thing. Like I know a lot of people say like, you'll never be an expert at something if you don't focus, but it's like, I don't know, that's boring. I, I don't know. I, I, I guess I call myself an interdisciplinary artist. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of funny because I feel like that's something that like the art community has to bestow on you before you can call yourself that. <laughs> the term artist is so loaded and it's unfortunate because it really shouldn't be because it should be like something that people can feel comfortable claiming. You know, you don't have to necessarily like pursue arts professionally to be called an artist. You don't have to sell work to be called an artist. Like 
Have you encountered that whole like starving artist mentality a lot? Oh, yeah. My mom, like, you know, she wanted me to go to school, but for something practical like teaching or nursing. And I always knew I wanted to study art. So it was, it took quite a long time for me to like um, allow myself to pursue an education in art. And yeah, and even coming up to it now, like I'm a professional artist and I, I make my living mostly through that. But when I tell my, tell people I'm an artist, they assume like, oh, you paint like pet portraits or like you have an Etsy store. Or, like, and those are great things, you know, but like um, that's not really the, you know, my path with that. Um, so people are generally pretty dismissive at first. And then I have to be like, no, no. <laughs> Like, oh, yeah. nice hobby. Yeah. <laughs> It'll yeah. never amount to anything. Well, even, <laughs> even half of the people that I graduated with felt mm -hmm. that way. Yeah. Something I really appreciated about, like, about my upbringing, you know, um, like growing up on a ranch um, in a, like, pretty isolated part of Canada. Um, and then going to art school in Vancouver with a lot of kids who, like, were raised in the suburbs or whatever. And, uh, I realized like, oh, most people didn't live how I've lived. <laughs> I know? bet, that yeah. had to be quite a culture shock. Oh, it was a major culture shock, yeah. Um, kind of made things difficult. Um, but it also it made me realize that I have a unique perspective that's right. probably underrepresented in the art world. When I was um, growing up, I was not part of like the arts and culture scene at all. Like. I thought the art gallery was for tourists, <laughs> so like I rarely right. went there. And it was just, it was like when I was finishing up school that I really kind of tapped in to the community, the arts community here. Oh, really? Yeah. Was there um, like a, a catalyst or like a specific moment that kind of like helped you kind of realize that like, say like the Dawson Creek Gallery wasn't just like a, a touristy place with... Well, actually, <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, while I was going, when I was doing my degree, I came back here during the summers to work mm -hmm. and I was working for the city of Dawson Creek and one year I was assigned to be the groundskeeper of the gallery. Oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah, and that's how I ran, like I met Marsha yeah. and the curator Kit. Um, I had some work showing in like just a small pop-up gallery downtown. So that's kind of how they knew of me. And I just, when I started working there, I introduced myself. I'm like, oh, Haley Bassett, I'm the new uh, groundskeeper. And uh, Marsha was like, you're Haley Bassett? <laughs> and I was like, you know my name? <laughs> so, yeah. It, and then, so that year, I started teaching, like, life drawing classes for the gallery and stuff. So, What have you achieved as an artist in already, like, your shows, for instance? And, mm -hmm. and what do you want to still achieve? Like, what would, what is your... Do you have an end goal? I have big plans. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm kind of really informed by like my experience of being so cut off from like the contemporary art world. Like when I was growing up, I had no idea that there was even an art industry, really. I, I had this idea that the only artwork people look at anymore in museums are things that were made hundreds of years ago, basically, and like almost nothing new is being produced. And if, if there is, it's like crap, basically, right? That was like mm -hmm. what I thought, only because I just never, wasn't exposed to contemporary art at all as a kid. So I guess like mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do with my practice is like show people here that they can pursue art seriously and like there is a path for them. Right. So I do that like through my work, my community work with the Arts Council and the Dawson Creek Art Gallery is like make opportunities that are low barrier for artists mm -hmm. to get them started. And then with my personal art practice, like I want to take that as far as I can to show like how far you can take it, you, right. know? Um, you know, as far as I can take it, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, it's sort of like, I don't know, both sides. Yeah, and it was funny because no one expected me to come home after school. Oh, yeah. Like, even people at the gallery, like, I was like, no, I'm coming here after school. And they're like, what? Because, like, okay, if you're serious about being an artist, you must want to stay down south, right? Mm -hmm. But, like, I have found my place here. You know, there's, like, I feel I needed here.
Oh, 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 